Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today is gonna be an exciting video, at least for me, because I get to talk about my BioLite Fire Pit Plus. This is a real owner's review. I've put several hundred hours of fire through this unit. I've had it all the way from New Mexico to North Carolina up to Maine. This is a real product that I use almost every time I go camping. So with anything, there's some pros and cons, but uh, a lot to talk about here, so uh, let's check it out. So if you ask me, the BioLite Fire Pit Plus is in a league of its own. Yet for all the reviews that I see or the write-ups, they're always trying to categorize it with the other smokeless fire pits. Like that stainless steel fire pit from Solo that has passive airflow. This is a completely different animal. Now, obviously there's some similarities, but this has legs that stand up off the ground. You see I'm burning this on a table right now. Um, there's no heat underneath, it's not gonna burn the grass, but it has this lithium powered battery. This 12,800 milliamp hour battery is rechargeable and it blows the air through the vents so that you can control the fire. You can go with very low flow or you can make it like a blast furnace. It's like having somebody stand over it and blow on the fire the whole time that it's burning. This does it so we don't have to but it does a remarkable job with what they call this X-ray mesh. Do you see that this fire has been burning in here and I can actually touch it? Now I don't recommend that you do that, but this thin mesh allows you to see the fire, especially at night. And this is one of the things that definitely differentiates this unit. It doesn't shield your view of the fire and just show the flames out the top. Even now, as I'm letting this fire die down a little bit, if this was nighttime, you'd fully be able to see the bottom of this fire and it looks like it's just floating off the ground. Now, why do we burn fires? Well, heat, we cook on them, keeps the bugs away, but it's a gathering point. People come around that fire when we're camping, tell stories, you know, roast marshmallows. It's just a central point for gathering. So I think that is a major, major plus side to this unit. So there's other things I like about it as well. A couple things I wish were done different, but let me show you how I store this thing and how I set this unit up. So I purchased my fire pit with the optional carrying case. Now it is expensive, but I highly, highly recommend it. It is a very, very high quality case and it makes the whole system a lot more practical when we're camping. Anytime I'm not burning a fire in this, I'm storing it in this bag. It comes in the car or the truck with me and we're good to go. Now they give you these really high quality buckles and the case is expandable. So no matter what other accessories, there's like dome tops and different skillets and stuff, everything will fit in this case if you get that. But one of my favorite parts is that this bag is designed to also be a firewood carrying bag. Like I said, it's very rugged. So if you go and purchase uh, firewood, you can fill it up in this bag and the straps and buckles are, and everything are strong enough to carry that firewood. But my favorite use case is when you're foraging for wood. So if you're at the campsite and there's some free wood that you can get, you know, going in the woods and breaking dead sticks up, instead of making a million runs with little uh, handfuls of sticks, you bring this out with you, you can get a good amount of firewood out there, away from your campsite, and carry it back. It's just so much easier. Definitely a perk of this bag. Now, the unit itself basically comes assembled. You have a couple screws you have to put in to attach these handles. But the unit has four legs to elevate itself up off the ground. This is what's gonna make the fire burn better. It's a lot safer. You're not confined to the fire pit. I'll burn this for hours on a section of grass and the grass underneath it does not die. It is relatively small. I'll put the dimensions on the screen over here. And it's very, very light much lighter than a lot of the fire pits that are available on the market. And this is part of the reason why this is so practical and why I bring it with me almost every time I go. Now there's also an accessory that comes with the base model. This is for cooking on the unit. It slides in really nicely. But the brains of this operation, I store it with the battery here, but the battery just clicks off with the push of this button. This is the brains of the operation. 
This is a 12,800 milliamp lithium battery with a high quality fan built into it. Now you charge this up with micro USB, there's plugs on the side, you can use this as a power brick to charge your phone or whatever you wanna do. But its main intention is to power the fan that supplies oxygen to the fire. There's control settings on the side, you can turn the fan up and down, and there's even, like all fancy camping gear these days, an app. You can use Bluetooth to control your fire from your phone. It works on iOS and Android. On a low setting, you can get 30 hours of fire without having to recharge this. A good idea, after every couple days of using this thing, throw it on the charger when you're done burning the fire at night. It charges up fast. It's really, really handy. It just snaps in on the side and you're ready to go. You can use the power button or use your phone to turn this on. With your battery pack installed, it's going to push air through the multi-speed fan on this to the four separate chambers. There's like 50 some ports in which it blows oxygen into your fire. This is really what's gonna separate it from the rest. You can burn a very hot fire that burns fast. You can turn the fan down and the flames will get taller. It's fine to burn this without the fan on at all. But what's gonna allow this to be low smoke or even no smoke and give you that efficiency where your fire firewood burns for twice as long is because you can just put a couple pieces of firewood in here at a time and with by feeding it oxygen you're going to have total control and long burn times on the wood that you're putting in this. Uh, firewood is not getting any cheaper and we all know the hazards uh, related to traveling with firewood and spreading invasive species. So to be able to buy a little bit of firewood at camp and to get a lot more runtime out of this one of the reasons why I'm dragging this thing with me on almost all the trips I go on. So before I fire up another campfire in here, I thought it would be important to talk about the only negative reviews that I see of this product. People love this. The reviews are glowing most of the time when somebody owns one of these fire pits. The only negative reviews I'm seeing are what the unit looks like after a lot of use. That's why I put a couple hundred hours of fire through this. I even intentionally abused it before making this video. I took a huge pile of brush and chopped it up and kept a massive fire in this thing burning for like three days straight. I wanted to see what type of damage would come from that abuse. I'm really impressed. If your unit is bending a little bit, when it cools down, you can just kind of push it back with your thumbs. Uh, it looks like I'd expect a fire pit to look. So the big thing is that mine has very little rust. Try to keep your unit dry. Uh, we'll talk about this later. I have a couple tips and tricks. It's not gonna break the unit. Your battery's fine. Um, this is all gonna hold up. But when you have hot metal and water hits it, it's a recipe for rust. So I'd be okay if my unit looked like a, a well-used fire pit. But for the time being, I have next to no rust. And I definitely attribute that to keeping this unit out of the rain. Now, while I'm getting another fire going in this unit, I figured it would be a good time to talk about some of the pros and cons that I've experienced, how I use this unit in my teardrop camping setup, and even how I came to own this unit to begin with. I never would have purchased this unit just from seeing the ads. I knew that it existed, but I didn't think there was a problem that I needed to solve. It wasn't until I went camping with somebody that owned this unit that I knew I had to have one. See, they set it up on the outside of the campsite so that they could back their tiny camper up right to where the fireplace was. You know, the campgrounds that have the built-in fire rings. So the ability to have the fire where they wanted it without creating a mess or, you know, burning where you're not supposed to was pretty nice to see. But it wasn't until I saw that they really weren't going through firewood. There was a nice fire burning for hours that they didn't have to feed that much throughout the day. It was burning significantly less than a traditional TP fire or a lean-to style fire. It's because you can fit just one or two pieces of dry split wood down in the bottom of this unit and it feeds itself with the air and the coals. So you don't need as much firewood to make a bigger fire. It was really, really neat to see. 
So in addition to burning wood really economically and being able to place the fire pit where you want it to be, um, I was really impressed with how little smoke comes out of the unit. As the fire dips down and the smoke just tends to circle around and everyone's moving their chairs, I know you've been there, they were able to take their phone out and just turn the fan up momentarily. It burns it hotter, combusts the smoke, and it shoots the smoke upwards so that it's not just swirling around low to the ground. It was a really impressive feature. If you have a shift in the direction of the wind, you can actually move this unit while it's burning. Now this unit here has been burning for almost an hour and I can still pick it up. Now don't try that at home, I don't know, bring gloves with you, but it does seem to defy the laws of physics on how uh, cool the outside of this unit is. But with the fan turned up, it is radiating heat. Part of the reason why the outside of this is cooled down is because the fan is blowing the heat outwards. So it really seemed like some sort of spaced aged fire and I had to have one. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this unit comes with some grates that you can put over the top. You can cook some burgers, chicken, sausage. When you're cooking that on hardwood, you're gonna be uh, really, really impressed with some of the flavors that you get out of that. Um, like I said, you can burn charcoal in there and you can modulate the heat once again with the front of the unit or using your phone to mess with that airflow that it's getting. They do sell a skillet that fits right on the top. They sell a big uh, dome style lid so you can get a bit of a baking or smoking effect out of this. So there's some really cool accessories. They do cost a boatload of money, but I think this base unit along with that bag is really, really gonna be a good buy for a lot of people. All right, so I feel like I could yammer on about the positives of this thing all day long, but I better talk about some negatives and some maintenance tips to help people out before the video gets too long. Um, the first negative is kind of a philosophical thing. I'm always trying to reduce the amount of gear that I bring. I like the simplicity of the type of camping that we do, and it seems a little counterintuitive that I love a Bluetooth controlled fire this much. But, you know, the proof is in the pudding. I brought this with me on almost every single camping trip I went on this summer. So it was obviously something for me personally that made the cut when it came time to packing up for a camping trip. The next negative, a little bit in that vein, is that the fan at higher speeds drives Lucia crazy. You know, if it's later at night and you're hanging out by the fire, it's nice to hear the crackling of the fire and not the fan noise. On the low speed, it's almost inaudible, but as you pick it up, you can, it kind of takes off like a jet and you can hear the fan running. So you might want to find a system for you where you're running on the lower fan speeds like we do and realize that it is okay to turn this off. Use the fan to get it going and then shut it off altogether. It works great. Um, the other negative about this unit is the fact that if you are obsessed with uh, your Instagram unboxing quality of this unit, it is going to fatigue. It is a fireplace. So you need to expect, I've never cleaned mine once. You know, I do <laughs> next to no uh, maintenance as far as knocking this out. I clean the ashes out of it and I put it away. But uh, do know that this thing is going to warp a little bit. You might want to take the time to kind of knock the dents back out if you worry about what it looks like. Um, but that's a negative that you should consider. Now you do have another battery. It's a good battery. It's going to last a long time. It gets excellent run time, but it's something that you have to consider charging. It'll run you a weekend trip, no problem. But if you're out for longer, I plug it into my solar panels or I plug it into my camper or a power station. So it's another techie thing that you're gonna have to deal with. And related to that, there is some do's and don'ts. You know, there is a good procedure to keep your investment protected here. I put it away when I'm not using it. I'll tell you how I do that. I try to avoid rain at all costs. If you're, the night's getting late, and a rainstorm's moving in and you get loaded and pass out in your camper and this thing gets poured on, it's not gonna look as good or last as long as if you follow these next steps. When you think the night is coming to an end, you stop filling it. You can turn the fan up all the way. 
This max mode is like a turbo engine. It's gonna burn this campfire out very quickly. I bring a set of insulated gloves. If you wanna be real cool, get a cheap pair of like welding gloves. They're gonna be good when you're cooking with cast iron. There's a lot of things you can use them for, but that allows you to actually just reach in and pull out some of the firewood that's not fully burned. I throw it in the fire ring. So that's gonna go out or, or uh, you know, burn up on its own. When this unit is just down to coals and the fan is kicked up all the way, it burns very, very quickly. There is an ashtray on the bottom that when you pull and turn the unit to the side, it burns the wood down to like talcum powder. So I knock that out in the fire ring as well. If there's not a fire ring, bring it to a place where you're not damaging the area that you're camping in. You know, maybe you have to dig a hole or something if you're trying to leave no trace, but very, very little ash comes out of this unit. Once you've knocked the ash and the coals out of this unit, removed the firewood, with that speed on high, this unit is gonna be cooled down in like 10 or 15 minutes. Remember, even with this fire burning, I can hold my hand on this screen. It's so lightweight that it cools down very quickly. It goes back in my carrying case and I throw it in the truck or I slide it underneath the camper or some canopy so that this thing is not getting poured on. You're not gonna damage the battery. You're not, the unit's not gonna stop working. It really just has to do with the wear and tear on the unit. So if you follow those steps, your unit's gonna look uh, as good as you'd expect it to. And I think this device is gonna be a great investment for a lot of people. Um, follow those steps, understand the pros and cons. Ask a question in the comment section if you have one. Uh, I hope you appreciated this, uh, this real world review for what it is. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. There'll be a link in the description.